Drug looking scans have been a blessing in the field of interventional cardiology. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, the permanent cage which uh, prevents vessel remodeling is uh, a limitation. The stent is a permanent structure which has a diameter given by the delivery balloon. If the stent is 3 mm and it post dilated to 3 mm, it will stay at 3 mm and the vessel, even if the vessel expands, the stent will prevent this expansion because it is a fixed metal structure. So with each cardiac pulse, each cardiac cycle, the vessel will distend and shrink, distend and shrink according to the, uh, the cardiac cycle. And this is what we call distensibility. Once the vessel is implanted with the DS, it's caged by this metallic mesh. So it became a rigid too. And we lost, we will lose some of this uh, physiological positivity or distensibility uh, of the vessel. It will more or less straighten that curvature and making the curvature at the end of the stand to be more extreme while the standard segment to be more or less straightened. And this is unnatural. And we have seen this happening with almost all kinds of DS. This will cause in the long run some problem because first you put the vessel under a different strain to its natural condition. And it has been shown that with the more straightening, there will be long, uh, more longer uh, unfavorable outcomes or events. And also with this extra strain on the stent itself, we have also seen strength, uh, stents that have been fractured in the long run, because the heart is continually, con con continuously pulsating. The problem that we see with today's uh, drug eluding stents is that although we think that the acute performance of the stents is excellent, the problem at the later stage is that we see these events occurring with an, with an event rate of 2 to 3% or 4% annually on top of what we see, what we have seen uh, initially. So if you add it up, you get up to a high number of uh, late events with current, what we're supposed, supposed to call good performing uh, drug eluding stents. There is a problem of a late catch up uh, in terms of risk stenosis and uh, uh, further neoarthrosclerosis. So I, I think the Achilles heel for the current generation DES is really the problem of late catch up uh, disease, typically after three years. That is not something that you're happy with because acutely you've done a good job in terms of technical procedure and the stent has done its job, but you know that somehow there is a failure. And so you're disappointed in a sense that how could I, what could I have done otherwise in order to prevent this?